Good morning, everybody. Good morning. The Lord be with you. We gather today to worship the Lord on the Sunday next before Advent, and the theme of the service throughout is the kingship of Christ, Christ the King. And so we commence by singing our first hymn, hymn number eight. Jesus Christ our Lord be glory, majesty, dominion and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Beloved in Christ we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name, through Jesus. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we read the Jubilate on page 104, just across the page. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth, 
Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is forever his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 95 on page 702. And is the reason we didn't have the Vanity, because the Vanity is Psalm 95. So we will read Psalm 95, page 702, beginning at verse one and reading by alternate half verses. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us us come into his presence with thanksgiving. For the Lord is a great God. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The sea is his, for he made it. Come, let us worship and bow down. For he is our God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. When your forebears tested me and put me to the proof. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The first reading can be found on page 833 of the Old Testament, and it's from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, beginning at verse 11. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As the shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince amongst them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
we will read together the first part of the canticle Te Deum. Please stand. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as the Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. If you'd like to follow the second reading in your Pew Bible, it's on page 30, page 30 of the Pew Bible. It's to be found in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25 beginning at verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come you that are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, When was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, You did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not not do it to one of these least ones, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Gospel Canticle of the Benedictus. Let us stand together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised him, born of the house of his servant David, through the holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of those who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hand of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. As it was 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. O Lord, save the King. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. God may clean our hearts within us. And today is the Sunday before Advent. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King, keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. And in all things, guide us to know and do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 We sing now a version of the 23rd Psalm. It's, it's, it's hymn number 20, The King of Love. My shepherd is.
Let us pray. The King of love, my shepherd is. Our readings today, we've contemplated those aspects of the nature of Christ. Christ the King, the shepherd of our souls. Lord Jesus Christ, you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And we bow before you now in humility, in the sense of our own unworthiness, and yet in the acceptance of your love, grace, goodness, and mercy, we can come to you. Because you are the King who has come to us to raise us up with the forgiveness of our sin, to wash and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, to bestow upon us the gift of life, to prepare us that we might live for you in the power of your Holy Spirit all the days of our lives. And in your service, we are in the service of all mankind. So, Lord, may we hear your word today and take it to our hearts and print that word upon our lives by the working of your Holy Spirit. That we might be your agents, your ambassadors, that we might be your hands upon the earth. King of love, you are our shepherd. You've called each of us by name. You lead us and guide us, nurture us and attend to us. We give ourselves afresh into your care and ask that we might be reassured in dark and difficult days that we might know your presence and your generous love. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayers today, we pray for the church and all the world, for all Christian people. We pray, O Lord, for our brothers and sisters in Christ who in any way are distressed through hardship and persecution. We pray that we might not only support them in prayer, but in every way that we can. We pray, O oh Lord, for the leaders of our church, and we pray for John, our bishop, And we pray for him as he leads not only our diocese, but as primate leads the whole Church of Ireland. Bestow upon your servant John the gifts of leadership and service that he will require day by day as he goes forward in your name. As we remember our diocese and our church, we pray for members of the church in Myanmar, a very difficult place to live and to live for Christ. Bless our brothers and sisters in that place, O Lord, that may they might know that you are with them as you are with us in prayer today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for his majesty, King Charles. We pray for the whole royal family and all who are in authority under him. Pray for the leaders of the nations of the world, giving thanks for those hostages who have been released to their families and communities. And we pray for a furtherance of peace and mercy in the Middle East. We pray for the country of Ukraine. We pray for their president. And we pray for all who suffer 
because of cruelty and the wickedness of war around the world. Lord, may we be agents of your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the needs of our parish and our community, and we remember in prayer all who suffer in any way. You may have family or friends who are ill or bereaved or somehow distressed today. We pray for the family of Clifford McConnell at this time of his passing and we pray for God's comfort and grace, peace of mind and strength to meet the days that come. Not sorrowing as those without hope but reminded always of the resurrection in the last days. Lord, when we lose loved ones we seek your comfort your presence and your healing. And so we take a few moments just to remember Clifford's family and anybody else that's known to us who's in any way in difficulty. And as we've interceded for many people in our prayers this morning, it's never wrong to bring to God our own needs, our own joy and happiness, our worries and cares, as we come close to a Father who loves us with a tenderness and compassion beyond measure. So we take a few moments in the stillness of this place to bring our own requests and prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we never forget, or should never forget, always to give thanks to God. Giving thanks to you, O Lord, in every circumstance. We bless your holy name that you have created us, given us the gift of life, the gift of new life and fellowship with you in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Go before us into the days that are ahead that we might do your will in all and every circumstance. And we conclude our prayers in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. I'd be relieved to know that I don't have an awful lot in the way, by way of announcements. Just for members of the choir, there'll be a joint choir uh, practice on Thursday evening in Mullet Glass at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. There's a season of great singing coming up. So if you'd like to be uh, part of that, you'd be welcomed. But those who are already part of it, practicing on Thursday evening, 7 o'clock in Muller glass, and thank you for all your dedication to that uh, ministry. Told you that be short. Uh, hymn number two hundred and eighty-one. Rejoice! The Lord is King.
Wonderful words in the gospel of Christ for those who are children of our Heavenly Father, for those who live in the way of Christ. And they're words that we need to take very seriously indeed. Sometimes we cast about and wonder, how am I to be effective for God? How am I to live the life that I am called to? For some, it would appear to be all about the proclaiming verbally or in textual form the truths of the faith. That's what I'm about, I suppose, when I stand up here. We are uh, declaring the truths and the ideas, the doctrines and the, the teachings of Scripture and, and so on and so forth. And that is important. But you all know, and I know well, that that is not the be-all, nor is it the end-all. Indeed, what we do on a Sunday morning, what we do when we stand up to sing and to kneel down to pray, what we do when we put out our hands to receive bread, and what we do when we stand up to read and to preach the gospel, and so on and so forth, is only the tip of the iceberg. And it really is only the tip of the iceberg, because we're only here for generally speaking, under an hour. Well, there we go over an hour, because my goodness, that would be far too much time spent thinking about God. That'd be far too much time spent in church. You're awful lucky you're not Greek Orthodox because you'd be here for about four hours. All right, and they, there's something in that. We stop and consider it. Why would we not want to spend as long as possible in the presence of God and the, in the, the love of God? Well, oh no, it's too long, the time's ticking, and I'm not talking necessarily about the long-winded sermon. Everything's too long. Get it over with. Don't we keep this too long today, Rector? We we'll have to go and... doesn't matter, we just have to go. And there is something in us that there's a resistance to the thought that we would want to spend longer. There's a lovely line in a hymn. And Anne will tell me what the hymn is afterwards. The rest of the hymn's gone for me. But there's that lovely line in it, and you'll know it. Here would I stay and sing. Here would I stay and sing. Get something of the nature of what it is to be in fellowship with God. Because in the end, we will be in fellowship with the Lord perpetually. And this is only a very dim shadow of what the glory of the presence of the Lord is is to be like. What's the rest of the iceberg then? What's under the water if only 50 to 60 minutes a week is spent in public worship? What's the rest? How are we to be? What does it mean to be Christian? Doesn't It's not all about being here. It is about being here, but it's not all about being here. It's all the other things of the faith. Time spent and devotion and thinking on the things of God and in prayer and ministry and outreach and work for the Lord. And so much of it should become reflexive to us. Not just not to have the right answer. You know, uh, my, my dad uh, told the story. He nearly threw somebody in the Liffey one day. My dad could be short-tempered. You wouldn't know that by knowing me. My dad could be short-tempered, big red-haired man. Uh, and he was dashing along one day. And he said to this girl <laughs> in Dublin in the 1940s, what time is it? She said, time you were saved. And he nearly threw her in the Liffey. He was so annoyed with her. He said, I was mad. Uh, you know, I think he was on his way to the Irish Church Missions or something. You know, he was involved in the things of God and he was late for something. He hated being late. What time is it? Time you were saved. And sometimes we reduce the faith as if we're feeding chickens or pigeons or something. The faith that Jesus describes, that is life transforming and transforming to the world and all around us, is this. When I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. 
When did we see, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And it almost seems so ordinary and so obvious that we miss it. That the great glory of living for Christ, living for God, being a Christian, doing the things that God has called us to, are so straightforwardly there in front of us that we miss it. We had the great privilege of living for eight and a half years between the, t the sea and the Ox Mountains in County Sligo. I didn't even know there were mountains called the Ox Mountains until I moved there. And it was a glorious, beautiful place. And very often I say to people, oh, we lived in County Sligo. They say, it was a lovely, beautiful place. And we had a lovely member of the parish, farmer. And you know what I'm going to say because you might well have said it yourself when people draw attention to how beautiful Kamla Hill is and the Morn Mountains are. He said, you can't eat the view. You know, there it is. All the beauty of what God has presented to us. Have you ever driven up over the top of, of, of the hill on your way down here? And just as you, there's a point up there, you can't actually stop your car and get out because you get, you get killed, you know, and take a photograph of it and you can see the viaduct and you can see the Morn Mountains and you can see this glorious thing and it's obvious and it's clear and a lot of the time we don't notice. We don't notice. You get used to it as our farmer in the West of Ireland. So you can become so used to it that we don't see it. And there's this glorious, fruitful, bountiful, colourful, delightful, rich life for Christ that is there for us. And what is it? It's being good in the name of Christ. It's being kind in the name of Christ. It's being gracious and merciful. It's stretching out your hand to bless. And you see somebody who has nothing, give them something. You see somebody who's in hard times, look after them. When you see somebody who uh, uh, has nothing to drink, give them a drink. All those sorts of things. Because these things are counterintuitive to how the world teaches us, which is to preserve ourselves, to keep our stuff to ourselves, to look after the things that are important to us. And I hate with a passion the phrase, charity begins at home. Well, of course we're kind to the people around us, but it's so often used as an opt-out clause for doing something to people over there or out there. Of course we're good to the people around us. If we're not, we need to have a really good look at ourselves. We need to have a really good study of our face in the mirror if we're not looking after the people in our home and in our home community. There's a whole world that we are required as stewards of Christ's creation and as members of the kingdom of God who have been given the new life of Christ to be and to do and to live out. And we may not be physically terribly active. You may not be able to run down the road after somebody to give them a loaf of bread. You may not be able to physically do that. But we all have the means to do something. We all have the means to reach out and bless and in the doing of it, be so unselfconscious that we don't think about it. We just do it. Come you that are blessed by my Father to inherit the kingdom. For when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. And so on and so forth. A life that because we are attuned to the mind of Christ... By committing ourselves to Christ, by committing ourselves to God, by turning in repentance and faith, being transformed by God and the indwelling of his Holy Spirit, we begin to see the world through his eyes. And we begin to see the need of the world through his eyes. But we are already built in his image and that is reignited by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That we become effective in goodness and in the blessing of other people. What we see in Christ here in his teaching is there is a requirement for us to be people of grace and mercy and generous spirit. And here's something that's going to probably challenge us all. 
That means that somebody else might call you a snowflake. You know that horrible term that has come into society. Somebody else might call you a wet, weak, liberally sort of person because you care about the plight of other people. But guess what? That's what Jesus is telling us to do, to stand out from the crowd. It doesn't mean that you're not allowed to have strong opinions. It doesn't mean that you're not allowed to, to think thoughts that are conservative. And why is the whole world now divided between people who want to be kind to other people and people who want to throw everybody else out? It's, you know, why is the world churned up like that or chopped up like that today? And it does mean that if we intend to live for Jesus Christ, we will stick out like a sore thumb. And that's part of the point of being a Christian. We're supposed to be distinctive. We're supposed to be of a different order of thing in this life, a different order of person. That the goodness and the kindness and the blessing and the presence of God radiates out of us. And... The whole world is telling us to tighten up, to strengthen up, to toughen up. And I'm not talking about all sorts of mad liberalism. I'm just talking about kindness, thoughtfulness, generosity. And we need to ask ourselves tough questions if we're going to be followers of Jesus. When we see people from the migrant community, what is our thought? When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. Jesus said, Jesus says that. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. And in the Old Testament, it says exactly the same thing. You want to go looking in the Old Testament that you are to care for the person who comes and lives among you. That doesn't mean that you mightn't think, goodness, you know, what effect is this going to have and all this? There's nothing wrong with that. But if you can't be kind to somebody, you can't smile at somebody, you can't give somebody something when they are in need, a pleasant word or whatever it is, then we need to look at the spirit that is within us that is burning us away and condemning us rather than the spirit of God that is showing us a great generosity of spirit and goodness. We don't have to go terribly far here in Vestbrook to see historically the impact of a community of Christian people who dared to live utterly differently to the rest of society and they're probably still meeting very quietly not terribly far away from here. The Society of Friends. They're not perfect. I went to school with a whole lot of them. They're not perfect. You know, nobody's perfect. But look at the impact by daring to think that women had a voice in society. That women could preach in a church. That everybody had the right to be treated well. That everybody had the right to be clothed and have a roof over their head. That everybody had to be looked after in society. Look at the impact in this local community and internationally the Society of Friends have had. And they're tiny, tiny, they always were a tiny group of people. And we're supposed to be the salt that brings the flavor to the world. The light, the little dim flickering light that isn't just in my small corner, but as a city on a hill, as a beacon to the world. And we're supposed to shine and live. And so we become the children of our heavenly king. That was an old children's hymn in the old hymn book, wasn't it? Children of the heavenly king. We are children of our heavenly king. And his being is wedded and woven into our being. And we are seen to be his. Not just by the things that I spout on a Sunday morning. Or the activity that we, is very worthwhile and very worthy that we come together on a Sunday morning for. But how we live for him is how we live for others. It's the only way people see that Jesus is alive. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is our shepherd and our king. Is how we are with them. How are we to be? When I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. When I was naked, you gave me clothing. When I was sick, you took care of me. When I was in prison, you visited me. 
And the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you like this? And he says, truly I tell you, when you did it to one of the least of those who are members of my family, you did it to me. That is what it is to be a member of the kingdom of God and a follower of our sovereign Lord, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. We bring our gifts now, we sing the hymn number 106. Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen.